Hello and welcome back to my channel. I am Jordan and today I'm here with a book review of The Water Dancer by Tana Hesse Coates. There has been so much buzz about this, so I'm sure you guys have probably seen it everywhere. It was recently selected as a part of Oprah's book club. And yeah, I'm excited to go ahead and give you guys my thoughts on this. So The Water Dancer is based on a young Hiram who was born into bondage and his mother was sold away. And in that process, he was robbed of his memory. Um, he comes to almost a near death experience and through that he discovers he has a special power and that's pretty much all you kind of know going into the book. So the book is heavy. I went in already knowing the book was going to be heavy. Like anytime you're focused on this, you know, enslaved people that, you know, that history, it's going to be tough. But being that I've read ta Coates' nonfiction, I was kind of like, you know, nothing can really be darker <laughs> than that. Oh, but I was wrong. <laughs> so the way the book is written, you are, it's not even that you feel everything. It's almost like you're transported, like you're physically tugged into the story. Like it is torturous at moments. Ah, that sounds so harsh, but it's like, it's like the way the sentences are written. It's so descriptive. And it's not even that it's poetic or super lyrical, even though it is, it's more so like it, everything becomes tangible and you are literally dragged through and placed into these scenarios. And you kind of are forced to be surrounded by everything that's being written and that I'm not saying that as a negative I'm just saying like you know to be you have to be in the right headspace well I had to be in the right headspace while reading this this was a book where I found myself like almost at certain points dragging through reading this and it almost felt like the dragging was intentional like it was drawn out through certain things that it's not m mundane but it's certain just scenarios where like oh my gosh I need to breathe like is how it felt while reading this. And if you have read this, please write down below if you know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about this. So I found myself, you know, Pyram, there's points where it's clear, like, you know, he was in depressive states and I found myself in those depressive states along with him. And I would have to pull myself out and like give myself a few days of a break from reading it. And Interestingly enough, I still wanted to know what happens in the book. So I would go back to reading it and go through that cycle. Not everything was, you know, that feeling, but it was very heavy while reading this. I do think it's very important um, to have stories like this, but I just want to make sure that, you know, you're mentally prepared because I thought I was mentally prepared and I wasn't ready. So, and it's interesting because it's not necessarily something it's not really graphic in the sense where it's like grotesque, but it's psychological torture, which is basically what enslaved people had to go through. And I, I do love the way that Todd Hesse Coates was almost, I have to think he was intentional in this, in the wordings, in the way that he chose to name the different characters. No one in here, to my memory, referred to themselves as a slave or call, he never called someone else a slave. He called them the tasked the task people when you're born to the task like and it's interesting because he had different types he had the quality whites and the low whites the verbiage I feel was very intentional and it was written in a way which I haven't read in other um, books that are based in times of slavery as well as of course Tana Hesky Coates he writes nonfiction or has written nonfiction he is, knows his history and even with the references to Natchez Way and um, like the history of the tobacco um, the tobacco plantations and pretty much going Natchez Way down to the south to the cotton fields and that whole play on there and also there's um, there's an interesting way where a historical fig figure is brought into the book. I'm still wrapping my head around that on the way, it, you know, it was done. <laughs> and it was interesting. It reminded me very much so of Underground, the book, not the book, Underground, the um, TV series, and the way they depict slavery as far as the day in, day out, how there were little kids in the cotton fields. Like they are showing they show the full picture in the effects of slavery, slavery. So being 
I like what I'm saying, the true effects of slavery. Clearly, we know all of the grotesque and inhumane things that enslaved people suffered, but the separation that this is the, the focus within this book, separation and not being able to be with your family, literally being pulled apart and having no rights over, not only over yourself, but those connections being ripped apart, you know, being ripped apart from your mother, having your child ripped apart, being ripped apart from your husband or your wife, never being able to choose to build a family and how that was strategically done and how inhumane it was. And it focuses on the inhumane, inhumane aspects of the slave masters. I know they don't use that term. Um, within the book, but essentially the um, slave masters versus a lot of times when narratives or things are written about s slavery and enslaved people, it kind of takes the humanity away from the enslaved people. What I loved about this book is it doesn't do that. It takes the humane, uh, like inhumane aspects of how you could literally blank out or whatever, have hate in your heart or whatever it is where you don't see people as humans anymore. Like, so torture that was brought on by physically dismantling families, like intentionally doing that and how hurtful and traumatic of an experience that was. Some of the major themes that I felt like played throughout was memory and I did like that a lot. I like a lot of authors who focus on memory and focus on how those things shape and impact us. And it touched on memory in many different ways, not just young Hiram's way, but also what we choose to remember through his father, like the way he wants to remember certain things and the way he chooses to almost write his own history of what he thinks really took place. Um, and it's just interesting. And it also focuses on, you know, trauma and what that does to memory and how it is important to remember, like remembering, although it is very taxing and there's a lot that comes with it within this book, it also is very essential. All in all, I thought this was a very well-written book. I, I can't say I enjoyed it because it was very hard for me. I will say I do feel like the story at times dragged but at the same time, I think that might have been intentional in some ways. So it's kind of hard to, you know, it's kind of hard to say because I really wanted to figure out um, some of the certain pieces with Hiram. And I was wondering, are we ever going to get there? But then once we started untying those pieces, this shot back up to me and I was like, oh my gosh, this, yeah, this was, this was good. So I ended up at a four stars and I do feel like it is a solid four stars. I feel like this was a great debut into literary fiction um, for Eric ta -Nehisi Coates. And I will read more from him. Again, just be mindful of the things that I noted, uh, the sun's down and I kind of have light to try to supplement, but we're going to go ahead and <laughs> wrap this up and just know that I do recommend this. If you are, if you enjoyed Washington Black, I think you will enjoy this. Although it's not the same, the writing style is kind of the same on the way it's more of a coming to age like story um, with a lot of other elements, of course, added into it. It also at some points reminded me of Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead, although Underground Railroad was more fast paced. So this one is at a slower pace and more lyrical. Um, but the content is is very similar. So if you liked either of those, I think you will enjoy this. And yeah, I'm interested to know your guys' thoughts for those of you who have read this. And yeah, love and light. And I guess I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. <laughs>